So, turn with me, if you guys don't mind, get your Bibles out, and turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Thank you, Lord. First Corinthians chapter one. One more eight four. Did you say first chapter first? First Corinthians. What chapter? Chapter one. Chapter one. You guys are there, say amen. 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 You guys are not there, say whoa. 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 Okay. <laughs> you guys there? Amen. Please stand. Let's all stand. We'll start from verse number 10. Now I plead with you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. You guys see that? You may be seated. May the Lord bless His word this morning. Amen. Amen. As we uh, partake of His uh, divine presence. You know, the, the one thing that I'm trying to uh, get through uh, with you all is the aspects of discipleship. You know, we're actually being molded and being trained. Uh, the whole aspect of us being here this morning is that I want you guys to no longer be uh, as you once were. I want you guys to be renewed in the... Uh, in the spirit of your mind, I want you guys to lay aside the old man. I want you guys to actually, at, at some point in time, uh, uh, kill that old man. Amen? So that you guys can start walking according to the spirit and not according to the flesh. Because, mind you, 90% of our problem is, is this thing up here. Okay? It has nothing to do with the devil. Really, the devil has, has really no no care for us. He doesn't care about me. He doesn't care about you. And the reason is, is, is because all he has to do is put a thought in your head and the next thing you know, man, we're, we're out there in left field. Amen? And, and it really doesn't take much, does it? It just, and, and you know, the problem is, is, is our stinking thinking. Amen? And, and that's where faith comes from. Faith comes from hearing, hearing from the Word of God, right? But if you're hearing the wrong thing, what are you thinking? The wrong thing. You see what I'm saying? What if you hear the voice of God within your thoughts, though, to tell you to do something, and then you, you're led there, and everything is just orchestrated, and it comes about, and it's just open doors like that, and you know it's God. That's good. You can hear His voice. That's good. That's awesome. There's a lot of people that are still having a hard time hearing his voice. How many of you guys hear his voice? Amen. That's good. Now, if you don't hear his voice, that's okay for right now. That's why you guys are here, is because I want you guys to tune your ears to hear his voice. Because Jesus says in John that my sheep hear my voice. Amen. And, and, and literally, that, that's, one, that's the only thing I need. Amen? I don't need anything else. It's just like what we were singing this morning, you know? I don't need anything else. All I need to hear is His voice. You know, sometimes it's dark outside. Sometimes things are not going right, right? And, and things are all messed up. And <coughs> things are not going the way I planned. But, you know, sometimes I just lock my doors. Sometimes I just come in here and the lights are out, and I, no music, no nothing, 
and, and I'm crying, and it's like, God, I just want to hear your voice. You know, I don't need to hear the answer. I don't need to hear the truth in a sense. I just need to hear your voice. Amen? Amen. And, and it's comforting. It's comforting. Because sometimes, you know, I, I just don't know it all. You know, I don't get the, I, I'm real. Amen. I have feelings too. But my feelings often get in the way. But he says here, now this is Paul talking to the church in Corinth. Obviously there's people within the church. Some here, some don't. Some are with him, some are not. Some are new in their faith. Some are pretty old in their faith. And, and, and yet people are still divisive and, and there's still contentions and, and jealousies and, and backbiting. And, and you guys understand, right? It's a new church. It's a young church. Yeah. Kind of like what we have here. Amen? Yeah. And, and Paul, being the apostle, or being the father figure, it is uh, trying to express his love for the church and, and that we should all be of one mind. Okay? Now, that in itself, guys, is uh, seems to be a hard thing. And the reason is, is, is because... Uh, when you look at the church as a whole, you can go outside and there's probably 200 churches here in, in Cherokee County. You know how hard it is for all of us to walk together? Let alone think the same thing. I'm just saying walk together. Or talk together. Reason amongst ourselves. You know how hard that is? So, with, with some churches, it's okay. Other churches, man, they're, it, it, it's like pulling teeth, right? And, and, and yet, this is, we're supposed to be of one body. <coughs> one church, one Lord, one Savior, one Spirit, one God, one Father, amen, of us all, right? <coughs> so how come we have different thoughts? How come we have different ideas? How come we have different uh, perspectives? How come when, when we read the Bible that one person thinks one way and another person thinks another way? Why is that? If I can tell you the truth, it may be a hard thing to talk about, but there's two different mindsets going on. You have a religious mindset and then you have the mind of Christ. And oftentimes the religious mindset is contradictory to the mindset of Christ. And just let's, let's just, um, thank you, Lord. I'm just going to jump here. Go to John chapter 8. Let's look at this. Can I show you the two mindsets? Very interesting here. You guys there? John chapter 8. Did you have something wrong there? You guys there? Verse number one says this. But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Now early in the morning he came again into the temple and all of the people came about him and he sat down and taught them. Right? Now would you agree that he's in a church setting right now? He's at the temple. A lot of people are around him and he's teaching. Right? Then the scribes and the Pharisees <laughs> brought to him a woman caught in adultery, and when they had set her in the midst, they said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what do you say? This they said, testing him, that they might have something 
of which to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and wrote on the ground with his finger as though he did not hear. Okay? And so when they continued asking him, he raised himself up and said to them, He who is without sin, let him cast the first stone. Okay? And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground, and those who heard it, being convicted in their hearts, went, up, went out one by one, beginning with the oldest, even to the last, and Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in his midst, and Jesus had raised himself up and saw no one but the woman, and he asked her, Woman, where are your accusers? Has no one condemned you? And she says, No one, Lord. And Jesus says, Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. <clears throat> Do you guys see this? There is a there is a, a battle of life going on in between this uh, between this young woman and Christ. And if I can pinpoint the problem, the problem is this religious thought process and the ideologies and the way that we believe and the way that we think. You know, automatically we're thinking that people are, you know, should be judged because of what they do. Come on now. And and I'm, I'm man, I'm speaking to myself this morning. Because God has really been pressing upon me to speak this thing. Because we're not necessarily loving each other the way that we love ourselves. You know, I pressed upon that a few weeks ago. You know, that you know, we should love God with all of our heart, and that we should love our neighbor as we love ourselves. But in this case here, who's our neighbor? The adulterous woman. Right? right? And and here we are in a church setting, and this woman is being pushed out in the midst of everyone that's looking, and instead of love, instead of the church loving her, they're condemning her. It's the church now. The scribes and the Pharisees are wanting to stone such a one because of her sin. And what does Jesus do? He doesn't do anything, does he? In fact, he doesn't even judge her. And most of us would look at this and say, Now, Jesus, aren't you not hearing? <laughs> you know, the, this woman is, is wrong, you know? And mind you, uh, she is wrong. What she does is wrong. But Jesus doesn't come to judge. He comes to set her free. Amen? Amen. And I want us to change our mindset from now on. Amen. Amen. I, I really do. Praise God. Uh, I, I'm asking forgiveness. Because I'm seeing that I might have said things and done things that are you know, possibly offensive, not to not to people, but to God. Come on now. The reason is, is because God has sent us to be lights in a dark world, right? He sent us to go and uh, bring the gospel to the poor, right? Jesus even says uh, he, he didn't come to, oh, go back to John chapter 3. We all can recite the verse John 3.16, right? Yeah. But what about John 3.17? For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him through Him may be saved. If we're always judging people, we're always condemning people, how can they be saved? Right. You know, love covers a multitude of sin. And uh, the Lord is 
trying to show me this morning that what we tend to think isn't necessarily good. I mean, yes, he's all in for righteousness. Yes, we need to be holy. Yes, you're right. Everything needs to be upright. We can't come to God with sin. But Jesus went to the sinner. Did he not? He went to the sinner. And here he was clean. He was beautiful and holy. Right? But, um, he, listen, I want to be like Jesus. Amen? We need to be more careful with our thoughts. We need to be more careful with our words. Because if Jesus didn't condemn this woman, neither should I. Amen? Because who am I? Am I not an adulterer? Am I not uh, a schemer and a conniver and a drug addict? I mean, hello. Am I not? Yes. I am all that without Christ. Amen. If he didn't forgive me, man, I, I, I am the worst of the worst. Amen. You guys would not like me. I'm just telling you the truth. Okay? I didn't really, I didn't even like me. You know? I had a hard time with me. Come on now. Amen. Go back to Matthew chapter 5. kind of interesting how God is, Christ is already teaching in the Sermon on the Mount, he's already teaching the difference between the religious mindset and the mind of Christ, amen? Because in, in this whole entire chapter, guys, actually goes all the way through to chapter 7, you guys need to understand, this is, this is the ideology Say ideology. ideology. You know what ideology is? It's the mindset of what our, what we believe. It's our ideas. Okay? And this is kind of like the core of what we believe. Okay? This is the ideology of Christ. This is what Christ believes. This is what Christ was setting into, into place so that we could change the way we're thinking. Amen? Because... Look at uh, verse 21, verse number 5. You have heard it said to those of old, you shall not murder. You guys see that? That's the old mindset. Okay? That's one of the Ten Commandments, right? You have heard it said. That's the old mindset. It's the religious mindset. He was coming after the religious mindset. You've heard it said of old, you shall not murder. Okay, and whoever murders will be in danger of judgment. But I say to you, whoo, come on now, this is the mind of Christ. But I say to you that whoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of judgment. Amen. You guys see that? So the mind of Christ is different. The mind of Christ, the way that he wants us to think is different. Yes, murder is bad, but if you, have, if you have anger towards your brother... That's just as wrong. That's just as wrong. You know why? Because murder comes from the heart. Amen? And nine times out of ten, the reason why we have murder is because of anger. Amen? And anger, uh, unresolved, gets in our heart and starts festering. And the next Amen. thing you know, your, your mindset and the way you're thinking is totally off key. Amen? It starts in the heart. So God's purpose and our plan for us right now is to stop looking at other people, start looking at ourselves. Amen. In order to love our, in order to love somebody else, we have to first love ourselves. And you're going to have to deal with yourself, contemplate and look within yourself. Listen, you say that this man's a murderer, but look at you. Are you not harboring, you know, anger towards your brother, right? Come on now. What, what does he go on to say? And whoever says to his brother, Raka, okay, which is uh, in, in, the, in the Hebrew, fool, shall be in danger of counsel. But whoever says, you fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar, and there remember that you 
that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go your way. First be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. You guys see that? Agree with your adversary. While there is, uh, while you are in the way, lest your adversary deliver you up to the judge, and judge you over the officer, and you will be thrown into prison. Now, isn't that interesting? How he's telling us not to judge in a sense that our judgment is off. Our judgment, the way that we think, is off. Okay. The real issue is the heart and, and the anger and the, uh, and the jealousy and the bitterness. Those things are, are the things that defile a man, right? And he says, listen, if you come up here and you're giving your offering and, and, and you have ought against your brother, it, it defiles the offering. So before you go and do anything... Go and get right with your brother first and then come and give you gift. Amen? What's more acceptable unto God? What's more acceptable? Why well, I didn't kill him. Really? Is that the way we're... we're I've heard it said though. You know? You know? God wants us to be clean vessels. Amen. Amen? He wants us to be clean vessels and useful for the... Uh, for the ministry. Amen. How how can we minister to somebody when we have anger and issues in our heart? Come on now. Amen. Verse 27. You have heard it said of those of old that you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you, whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery in his heart. You guys see that? And, and this is the mind of Christ. This is the... Listen, when we're when we're saying that God, I want I want to be acceptable, it's the mind of Christ. Okay? We're no longer looking outwardly. We're no longer looking at someone else's sin. Because you can point your finger at somebody else and, and come to realize that you're you've got three fingers pointing back at you. Man. Right? And, and God wants us holy. He wants us righteous. Right? Furthermore, verse 31. It has been said, whoever divorces his wife, right? I mean, all this, if you guys can see, this, this is hitting hard. Every one of us are found guilty. Every one of us have issues with these things, right? Amen. But it has nothing to do with what we're seeing. It has everything to do with what we're having on the inside. Amen. Amen. Many of us struggle with these things. And, and, and listen, we... There is condemnation galore. And the church is relevant, man. They don't want people in church if you've been divorced. You, you're, I'm just saying, there's all kinds of condemnation going out, man. And, and, and Christ never did say anything about anything when it came down to sin. Now, mind you, this kind of puts it in place. He, he doesn't condone it. But he doesn't judge at this time. Amen? Why? Because judgment is left at the seat of judgment. Amen? When we all, right now we have grace. Right now we have grace. Right now we have a ton of grace. Amen? To make things right. Right now we have a, a way of making things right. Amen? And thank God for His grace. Thank God for His love. Amen? He was, remember John 3.17, He was not sent to condemn you. But to save you. Amen? And, and yes, sometimes when we come through the doors, man, that we feel, you know, the condemnation. We Listen, but it ain't going to come from me. I, I don't want it to come from me. I don't want it to come from you either. Amen? I want people to feel love when they come in through these doors. Amen? I, I'm just saying, listen, this should be a place of grace. Amen? None of us should be feeling uh, condemnation. Because every one of us are guilty. Every one of us falls short. Come on now. And none of us have got it right, including myself. Amen? But if people are not feeling the love, man, they're not going to come back. Okay? Because all they're going to feel is what everyone else 
is, is going through with every one of, uh, of these other churches, you know. And I'm not saying that all these churches are, are bad, but you know what? There is a lot of churches, man, that just don't have the love that it takes to do ministry, you know. They're so conceited and they're so all about them and all they want is money, 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 you know. And I'm not saying that any of that is bad, but if all you want is the money and you're not doing anything with it, okay, but building fancy houses and, and having a fancy church and all these people are left out here homeless and cold and, and we're not doing anything about that. They're, they're, where's your heart? You know, where's your heart at? It's not in the mix, is it? You know, and we need to be people that have a heart. Amen? So, uh, you know, just every now and again, even today, you know, check your heart. <coughs> How is it when we're coming up for a communion this morning, you know? Are we in right standing? You know? Do we have ought? Do we have issues? You know? I I'm just saying, I'm not perfect either. I need the blood just like you guys. Amen? I'm not trying to make anything hurt, but at the same time I want to give you guys a chance to heal, because if you don't know what is hurt if you don't know what is broken then God can't fix it, amen He wants to fix you He wants to make you clean, He wants to make you whole, amen and, and wholeness comes through finding out, you know, why do you go to the hospital? Because you're sick right? That, that's why you should go Right? I don't know of anyone that goes to the hospital because they're healthy. It's kind of a misnomer, right? And, and yet doctors are saying, well, you should come when you're healthy. <laughs> Why? So I can spend more money? Come on now. You know, if, if I'm in need of a surgeon, I'll go to a surgeon. Why? Because something's broke, right? I'm not going to go to a surgeon because I'm whole. I'm not going to give them any more money than what they are, are needing from me, right? But, but you guys get the picture. Why, why do you come to the church? Is it because you're healthy and happy, everything's going good? That would be an okay thing now. I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. But most of the time, you come to the church is because you need something. Amen? And that's not a bad thing. When you're looking at the Bible, every time people who were looking for Jesus was the reason why it was because they needed something. Amen? But yeah, here we are singing this song. Uh, I'm not here for a blessing. Jesus, you don't owe me anything. Come on now. There does come a time where you're okay with what you have. And you're coming because you want to love on Him. Amen? And, and that's the that's the change and perspective that I want you guys to come into. Amen? There's the outer court, and then there's the inner court, and then there's the Holy of Holies. Amen? The outer court is where most of the people are. Okay? Most people are there at the sacrifice. Most people are there when it you know comes down to tithing and everything else. And, and they tend to get together and socialize on the outer courts. Not too many people come into the inner court. And that, that's where it gets a little bit messy because you're no longer the one being served. You're now the one serving. Come on now. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? And you're doing the work of the ministry on the inner court. And you're going in between God and them, you know, trying to take care of the need and fixing the issue. Come on now. But then there's the Holy of Holies. And that's where the priests are, are uh, you know, they're no longer serving people. They're now serving the Lord. Amen? And, and you know what? I, 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 I want to challenge you guys. What has Christ called us to be? Disciples. What has Christ called us to be? Priests and kings, right? You see what I'm saying? So, are we not supposed to be entering in? You know, we can't stay at the outer court all of our life. That's not His purpose. His purpose is to bring us in. Because when Christ 
uh, when Christ was at the cross, uh, a massive earthquake came and, and, and tore the temple in half. Literally, you know, it was ripped right in half. The curtain that, that separated us from God was ripped in half. And it is kind of interesting that even today, after 2,000 years, it still has not been uh, brought back. Okay? The temple has still not been raised up. The, there is no curtain in between us and God. Amen? For Christ has become our mediator. And now that Christ lives within us, we have the opportunity to come before the Holy of Holies every single day. Come on now. Not just on Sundays. Not just on Wednesdays. Not just when the doors are open. But you can have your Holy of Holy moments at home. Amen? In your car. In a big truck. It doesn't matter. At, at, at Brown Peck, and I know that may sound kind of strange, but, you know, wherever you guys are at, Christ is with you. Amen? Amen. The hope of glory is already with you. You don't need anything else. Sometimes you just got to shut yourself in. You know? Sometimes you just got to close your eyes, and you're right there at the Holy of Holies. Amen. You know? That, that's, the beautiful, that's the beautiful part about the relationship with God is that He's given us direct access. You don't need me. You don't need anybody else but Him. Amen. <coughs> and if you're having trouble, just close your eyes and search your heart. You know? Be like that woman at the well. Be like the woman who had issues uh, of blood. Be like the, uh, you know, the adulterous woman. Be like the blind Bartimaeus. You know? Be like Lazarus. These guys all had an experience with God. And they were outside of the realm. Amen. They were not priests. They weren't, you know, um, publicans and all these. They, they, it was kind of interesting. The people that Christ chose was not of the church. He didn't choose. Well, one person was of the church. Who was it? Well, two people then. Who was the second person? Paul. Paul. Amen? Was Paul part of the church? Judas? Judas was uh, Jesus' brother. Okay? But uh, Paul was a part of the church, of that church structure back then. And he even came out. He even said, listen, I, I throw everything away that I knew. All the religious relics, all the things, that, all, all the, uh, you know, the law. I throw it all away. You know why? Because all I found is Christ. Amen. And that's all I want. Yeah. You know? and, and listen, he was effective with more people on the outside of Judaism than any other person, Right? Even Peter had a hard time to come on now. Even though Peter was not a part of the church, he was still a Jew. And he had a hard time changing his mindset, didn't he? Come on now. Because when he was with the Jews, he acted like a Jew. And when he was with the Gentiles, he was acting like the Gentiles, you know. He was talking like a Gentile. But then when Peter came into the room, he said, hey, hey uh, or when Paul came into the room, he said, hey, Peter, what are you doing, man? You can't be two-sided. You can't be one way with one group and another way. What are you doing? That's hypocrisy. Right? You're either going to be a Jew or a Gentile. Which one are you going to be? You know? And, and listen, all, all this all this stuff with Bible study, and, listen, it has nothing to do with our perspective on who we are. Okay? If, if you're not going to walk with God, you're not going to walk according to the Spirit. And nothing else matters. You can, you can talk, a, talk a talk and walk a walk, right? But if you're just doing it according to the flesh, just so that you can have a title and, and a piece of paper and all this other stuff, it ain't no good, guys. Am I right? Well, what's this first Corinthians 13 say? You know, though I speak with tongues of angels and have not love. You know what I'm saying? I'm nothing more than a clanging cymbal, right? You guys understand. 
but we've got to change our perspective. Okay? I, I don't want us to look at people and see their problem. Because everyone's got problems. Okay? <coughs> I want you to start looking at people and see their purpose. Okay? Come on now. When you look at somebody, ask God, say, hey God, what's their purpose? What's their purpose? Because a lot of people don't know their purpose. And that's why they're spinning around with no hope. If you don't have a purpose in life, you don't have a hope. Come on now. You don't know why you're here. Right? Why are you at Mission of Grace? Have you found your purpose? Have you found a, something to do that you can be a part of spiritually? Amen? Because when you find your purpose, you'll be locked in. I won't have to make you come to church. You'll come. Because you'll find something to do. Amen? And, and you'll be a part of the process. You, you'll see the love. Amen? You'll see the love. And you'll be a part of that love. That's what I want you guys to do. That's, that's what I'm trying to change our perspective and the way that we're looking at things. Okay? okay when it comes down to school, listen. It's not about the piece of paper, brother. It's about changing our perspective. Right? And getting the right foundation down. So that we can love people. Amen? So that we can learn to love ourselves and love people. Amen? That's what I want to do. No more backbiting. No more No more this. No more that. Listen, I've had enough of that. Amen? Have you guys had enough of that? <laughs> I'm just saying... It ain't working that well. Amen? It ain't. And that, listen, I've, I've been apologizing already, amen? If I already had to say I'm sorry, I'm, I'm just saying, I, I want to learn more too. Amen? I, I just want to do what Christ wants us to do. And looking at this message here this morning, I'm saying, God, we still got a long ways to go. You know, we really do. You know, we're, but we're young in the ministry. Amen. Praise God. We're not, you know, old in our faith and thinking that we are all that in a bag of chips. No, we're all young in our in our faith. We're all young and and moldable and pliable, right? We and, and that's where you want to be. You know, you, listen. Correction is not rejection. God is not trying to reject you and saying that you're not good. He's just saying, listen, this is the way we're thinking needs to change. Mm -hmm. And when we change our way of thinking, we'll do, get our redirection and, and, and God will give us a new way of doing things. Amen? You guys see what I'm saying? Okay? Now, as, as we partake of, uh, uh, of uh, this morning's communion, as you guys come up, uh, is there anything that we need to deal with uh, before we have communion, you know, is there anything that we have to look at within ourselves and say, you know what, God, what Pastor Mike is saying this morning really does have, uh, you know, really does hit home, God. I, I haven't necessarily been loving the way I should be loving. I, I may have, I may need to change my way of thinking. And, and you know what, God, you're right. I, I need to love more, amen, and criticize less. I need to love more. You know, I, I, one thing I need to say, guys, is I, I've learned a hard lesson from being a father. Learned a hard lesson because I've got six beautiful, awesome kids. You know? But over the years, I have not been that good of a dad. If I can just be honest. I've been critical and analytical and just kind of, you know... And I'm looking at that, and I'm saying, okay, so how's that been going for you? You know, do your kids love you? You know, kids following you, you, you know, and it's like, well, no. You know, and I'm pointing the finger at them. Come on now, saying it's their fault. Whose fault is it? I'm just saying. I could be doing a little bit better. <laughs> Amen. 
So I've been changing that perspective. My kids are starting to like dad now, you know, they're listening to dad. I'm just saying I'm, I had to do a metamorphosis in my thinking, amen? And, and it's hard. It's a, you know, it's, it's a mindset that, you know, is, is steeped in the law and we don't like, you know, certain things, right? And what if certain people come in? We're going to start judging them because, you know, they're black or white or because they're homosexual or, you know, what, what kind of mindset are we going to have, guys? Are we going to see their purpose or are we going to see the problem? You see what I'm saying? I don't want to see the problems anymore. They, they need Jesus. They don't need me. They need Jesus. And when they get to Jesus, their problem is going to be solved. Amen? You know how many homosexuals I've seen change? Many. But it wasn't because of me. Come on now. I'm just saying, if they, if they don't get a chance to come in, they ain't going to see. Am I right? So, uh, let's all stand. If I can get Dennis. I guess Dennis and Derek. If I can get you guys to uh, hand out the uh, influence books. Fifteen. <clears throat> Starting in verse 17 says this. Do you not understand that whatever is in the mouth goes into the belly and is cast into the drop? But those things which proceed out of the mouth comes forth from the heart. And they divide a man, for out of the heart proceeds evil thoughts murders, adulteries, fornications, theft, false witness, and blasphemies. These things are the things which defile a man. But to eat with unwashed hands does not defile a man. You know, when we drink of these, uh, when we partake of this, we're partaking the body of Christ. And it's a special holy thing that we should always do. 
But if we're defiled within ourselves, the Lord says in 1 Corinthians that we should, we should offer an opportunity to reflect within ourselves. If there is anything that is unholy or unhealthy, right now we ask that Father would forgive us and cleanse us. As it says in 1 John 1, 9, that if we confess our sin, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So, Father, as we partake of, of these things this morning, God, I ask that we are able to partake of these things, Father, that we have a holy uh, vessel, God. We do not want to be unworthy, God. We, we understand that the blood and the body of Christ is been given to the body, has been given to the church, has been given to us, God, for life and health. And so, Father, we partake of these things knowing the value of what was given. For, Father, your body, it says that Christ was stricken in Isaiah, that his body was stricken and bruised, and, and every stripe that was placed upon him his body was given for our healing. So God, we speak against this, the diseases and against the unhealthy effects of our body. And, and Father, we line this thing up according to the uh, body of Christ. And we say, in Jesus' name, we line our body to the body Amen. of Christ. For His stripes we are healed. For by His stripes... We declare our healing over our body and over our mind and over our soul in Jesus' name. For, Father, you have given us an opportunity to live and to live abundantly. So, Father, we thank you for the body of Christ. And we receive, we receive this. And we thank you. For sacrificing your body on that cross so that we can live. We receive this now in Jesus' name. The cup represents the blood of Christ. It says in the word that uh, there is no remission. There is no removal of sin unless there has been a, a blood sacrifice. And so we understand that Christ being the perfect Lamb who was slain before the foundations of the world was now giving of His life, which is in the blood. He gave His life so that we may be free from sin. No longer condemned. No longer uh, uh, unjustified, but now cleared of all guilt because of the blood of Christ we now receive forgiveness of sin. So, Jesus, we thank you for your blood. We thank you for the blood of Christ. We thank you, God, that uh, we, we receive not just uh, a partial forgiveness, but all of our sin has been forgiven. And Father, we ask that you cleanse us, Lord, and keep us within the palm of your hand. Let us, let us apply this blood today, God, and let us put a value to what you've done for us, God, so that we may walk worthy from here on out, God, as we leave out these doors, that we may be worthy of the blood. Always understanding, always remembering what you have done for us, Lord. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. It washes white as snow. Amen. Amen.
May the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ give you peace. May He bless your way. May He prosper your path. May He show you the trueness and the, and the value of your life. May He give you an opportunity to find your purpose this year. That you may grow in the, in the fellowship of the faith and that you may endure the testings of your uh, and trials of your faith that you may know and understand the truth so that the truth can set you free. I bless you today. I bless your hands. I bless your feet. I bless your mind. May your mind be in Christ. May you no longer uh, think the thoughts uh, of, of, of the ways that, of religious ways. But may you think the thoughts of Christ, and may you be like Christ as you uh, touch the lives of other people this week. I bless you today. I bless you today. And I thank you for being a part of my family. I thank you for being a part of the church. I thank you for being a part today. May you go in peace. And I pray this all in Jesus' name. And everyone says, Amen. Amen. Amen.